A very good evening aspirants, I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar Ayes Academy. Aspirants, those who have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular updates about our controversy videos. Today, I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspaper dated 28th of November 2023. Displayed here is a list of topics that we will be discussing today. At the end of the video, we will also have prelims practice question discussions. So, try to watch the entire video. Now let us get into our first news article discussion. Look at this article from the text and context page. This article talks about the fiber optic cables. This article explains the science behind the working of fiber optic cables. So we shall understand them in this news article discussion. Now first let us understand what is this fiber optic cable and how it is made up of. Optical fibers which is otherwise called fiber optics are made up of thin cylindrical standards of glass. The diameter of a typical fiber is close to the diameter of a human hair. These fibers can carry information like texts, images, videos, telephone calls and anything that can be encoded as digital information. The fiber optics can carry information across large distances almost at the speed of light. Okay. Now talking about the main components of fiber optics, fiber optics consists of a core, cladding and a buffer coating. Now let us take core. Core is the central tube of very thin size made of optically transparent dielectric medium. This core part is only made up of glass. Also note that the core can be made up of plastics also. The core carries the light transmitter and receiver and its diameter may vary from about 5 to 100 micrometer. Now coming to the second component which is nothing but cladding. See cladding is the outer optical material surrounding the core. It has reflecting index lower than core. So it helps to keep the light within the core throughout the phenomena of total internal reflection. We will see about what is total internal reflection in a minute. Now coming to the final component which is nothing but buffer coating. See the buffer coating is a plastic coating that protects the fiber. It is made up of silicon rubber. The typical diameter of the fiber after this coating ranges from 250 to 300 micrometer. So these are the main components of an optic fiber. Now moving forward let us understand the working of the optical fiber. The optical fiber works on the principle of total internal reflection. Now let me explain the concept with an example. Imagine you are having a straw or a pipe made up of glass. If you shine a light into one end of the straw, the light travels through the glass. But if you try to shine the light at an angle towards the edge of the glass, something interesting happens. See in normal situations, light would usually bend or refract when it moves from one material to another. But if you shine the light at a shallow angle towards the edge of the glass, it does not actually come out of the glass. Instead, it reflects back inside. This phenomenon is called total internal reflection. This total internal reflection is the basis of guiding light across long distances without a significant loss of optical power. The signals are encoded as electromagnetic waves and fed into one end of an optical fiber. Then they reflect and bounce many times between the glass walls as they transverse several kilometers bearing the information in the signals. So this is how the optic fiber works. Remember a fiber optic communication system consists of three parts. It includes a transmitter, an optical fiber and a receiver. The transmitter encodes information into optical signals in the form of rapidly blinking light pulses of zeros and ones. Then an optical fiber carries the signal to its destination. And finally the receiver reproduces the information from the encoder signal. I hope you got the complete picture of how optical fiber works. See optical fiber has numerous advantages than the traditional ways of communication. The optical fiber has revolutionized the communication sector and made efficient data transmission possible. The optical fiber has high carrying capacity, high data transmission rate up to several terabits per second in a single fiber. The optical fiber is also insensitive to external perturbations such as lightning and bad weather. In addition to this, optical fiber is flexible, lightweight and has less signal degradation. Also it is less expensive, it consumes low power and it is non-flammable. So due to these advantages, they have huge applications in various sectors. Now we shall see them one by one. Apart from its uses in telecommunication, the optical fibers can be used for data transmission in high level data security fields of military and aerospace applications. They are used in wirings in aircraft, 
hydrophones for sonars and seismic applications since they transmit information at lightning speed they are used in airbags and traction control in automobiles and it is also used in medical applications to view the internal body parts apart from this they also help in imaging of hard to reach places okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the basics of fiber optics then we saw about the components of fiber optics then we saw about the working principle of fiber optics then we saw about the advantages of fiber optics and finally we saw some points regarding the applications of fiber optics remember all these points this can be asked in both prelims and mains now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this picture here yesterday on november 27th the guru nanak guru purab was celebrated this is a festival honoring the birth anniversary of the first sikh guru guru nanak dev here you can witness people gathered together to observe and honor the birth anniversary of guru nanak dev so in our discussion today let us see a few points about guru nanak dev guru nanak dev was born in 1469 in the nana kana sahib his place is located in present day pakistan guru nanak is considered as the founder of sikhism and he is the first of the 10 sikh gurus guru nanak led the foundation of sikhism he established sikhism's core beliefs practices and principles apart from this he also composed hymns and spiritual verses that were later compiled into the guru granth sahib which is the holy scripture of sikhism okay now moving forward let us see some of the important teachings of guru nanak dev his teachings revolved around three core pillars the first pillar is naam japna naam japna means meditating on god's name then the second pillar is kirat karni kirat karni means living an honest life and earning through hard work and the final pillar is van chakna van chakna means sharing with others especially with the less fortunate okay see these are the three core pillars of the guru nanak's teachings all the other teachings of the guru nanak are derived from these three pillars now let us look at his other important teachings firstly guru nanak advocated nirguna see nirguna is a practice of devotion and worship of a formless divine being secondly guru nanak preached the concept of ik onkar which means the oneness of god he believed in the unity of god he emphasized that all humans are equal in the eyes of the divine regardless of their caste creed or gender in addition to promoting religious equality guru nanak also advocated for social equality he condemned discrimination based on caste religion or gender he established langars that is community kitchens in sikhism in these community kitchens people from all walks of life could sit and eat together regardless of their background through this he promoted social equality apart from this guru nanak also promoted the concept of seva now what is seva the selfless service to mankind is known as seva this seva is the central to the teaching of sikhism in fact guru nanak advocated the concept of dasvant or donating 1/10th of one's earnings among needy persons okay in addition to this guru nanak also laid plans to create an egalitarian society for that he proposed three innovative social institutions they are langar pangat and sangat langar as we already saw is collective cooking and sharing of foods pangat is partaking food without distinctions of high and low caste and finally sangat is collective decision making okay so through this three innovative social institutions he led plans to create an egalitarian society and finally he rejected renunciation here renunciation means austerities are rejecting worldly pleasures nanak advocated a way of life that allowed for the discharge of domestic obligations of family and spiritual duties even the guru himself after attaining enlightenment came back to punjab and continued to live as a farmer okay so these are all some of the important teachings of guru nanak dev and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the basic information about guru nanak dev then we saw in detail about the teachings of guru nanak dev see remember all the points that we discussed this can be asked in upsc prelims now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this editorial article this article talks about various challenges faced by the supreme court of india and the need for reforms in its functioning this article discusses 
the structure and the functions of the Supreme Court of India, highlighting its jurisdiction, division of benches, and the challenges posed by the backlog of pending cases. It also outlines the importance of Supreme Court's constitution benches, which addresses significant constitutional law issues. The article also raises the issue of pending case load and the need for structural reforms in the Supreme Court. So this is the summary of the editorial given here. In this context, let us discuss various challenges that hinders the effective functioning of the Supreme Court and what can be the steps needed to be taken to address those challenges. As usual, we will approach this topic through mains answer writing approach. Before that, let us look into the syllabus. This topic comes under GS paper 2 under the section of structure, organization and functioning of the executive and the judiciary. Okay, this is the syllabus. Now let us look into the question. The question is, nearly 80,000 cases are pending in the Supreme Court of India. In this light, analyze the challenges that hinders the effective functioning of the Supreme Court of India. What can be done to improve the efficiency of the Supreme Court? 250 words, 15 marks. See, this question is pretty much a straightforward one. Here the question asks to analyze the challenges faced by Supreme Court that hinders its effective functioning. Then we must also provide some suggestions to improve its efficiency. So the body of the answer can be divided into two sections. In the first part, we shall mention the challenges and in the second part, we will suggest some steps that can be taken. Okay. So this is how we are going to approach this particular question. Now let us start with introduction. Since the question is about Supreme Court, we can mention about the basics of Supreme Court in the introduction part. The introduction can be like, Indian judiciary is an independent body that ensures the fair and impartial administration of justice in the country. The Supreme Court is the highest court of appeals in India. It comprises the Chief Justice and 33 other judges appointed by the President of India. The Supreme Court has original appellate and advisory jurisdiction. Okay. Here you can also mention some constitutional provisions regarding Supreme Court. For example, Article 124 to 147 deals with Supreme Court. Article 124 states that there shall be a Supreme Court of India constituting of a Chief Justice of India. Okay. So you can mention all these points in the introduction part. Now let us move on to the main body of the answer. Here we are going to explain the challenges faced by Supreme Court and the steps that can be taken to improve its functioning. Now we shall see the challenges that hinders the effective functioning of the Supreme Court. The first challenge is backlog of cases. One of the most significant challenges faced by the Supreme Court is the backlog of pending cases. The court is burdened with a large number of pending cases leading to delays in justice delivery. As per the data from the integrated case management system, there are about 80,000 cases pending in the Supreme Court. Also note that there is no time frame for judges for disposal of cases. This also leads to more delayed disposal of cases. Okay, so this is the first challenge. Secondly, judicial vacancies. Vacancies in the Supreme Court impact the disposal of cases. The delay in appointing judges also contributes to the backlog of cases and also hinders the effective functioning of the Supreme Court. Okay, this is the second challenge. Thirdly, conflict with the executive. See, there have been rising conflicts between the executive and the judiciary wings over multiple matters such as delay in appointments, open criticisms of judiciary by center, and so on. This leads to the creation of tensions and mistrust between judiciary and executive. So this will reduce the efficient functioning of judiciary. Okay, so this is the third challenge. Then the fourth challenge is strike by lawyers. The Supreme Court bench stated that lawyer strikes are one of the major reasons for pendency of cases. As per the data provided by the Supreme Court, lawyers strike for 91 days an average per year. So this also contributes to the problem of judicial inefficiency. Okay, this is the fourth challenge. And the final challenge is less use of technology. See, in order to have a more efficient judiciary, it needs to adopt the latest technology. This will reduce the huge amount of paperwork involved. The database of the court is also not maintained in one place and there is also no recording of the proceedings and hearings. So these concerns also hinders the effective functioning of the Supreme Court. Okay, so these are all some of the important challenges that hinder the effective functioning of the Supreme Court. Now we shall see the steps that can be taken to improve the efficiency of Supreme Court. Firstly, in order to reduce the pendency of cases in Supreme Court, regional benches should be established. Article 130 of the Indian Constitution empowers the Supreme Court to set up Supreme Court benches across India. So setting up of regional benches will facilitate faster dispensation of justice. 
also establishment of more fast track courts will also reduce the burden of supreme court okay this is the first step the second step can be modernization of courts supreme court need to be fully digitized and a proper infrastructure should be built to provide ecss improving judicial infrastructure through the use of e platforms and setting up of more courts will ensure the timely disposal of cases and reduces backlogs okay this is the second step thirdly strengthening the alternative dispute resolution mechanism can also help to improve the efficiency of supreme court some of the alternate dispute resolution mechanisms like arbitration mediation and conciliation can help the parties to communicate and resolve the dispute without going to court it offers to resolve all types of matters related to civil disputes so many of the cases reaching the courts can be settled at the pre litigation stage through counseling okay this also reduce the burden of pending cases in the supreme court okay fourthly establishing an all india judicial service and creating a judicial management cadre to manage the administration of judiciary at all levels will solve the problem of vacancies and reduces the backlog of cases in the supreme court fifthly in order to deal with the pendency of cases the courts should be open throughout the year however calendar of supreme courts provides week long vacations each for holi dasara muharram and diwali along with the long winter vacations so increasing the number of working days will strengthen the efficiency of supreme court okay so these are all some of the steps that can be taken to improve the efficiency of supreme court okay that's all regarding body part of the answer now coming to the conclusion in the conclusion part we can suggest some more steps to increase the efficiency of judicial system the conclusion can be like in order to reduce the frequency of adjournments and better case listing reforms on case management is much needed one there should be a balance between judicial accountability and judicial independence both these concepts aim to bring about judicial courage and judicial integrity is to be enforced together to increase the efficiency of working of the judicial system okay so this can be a balanced conclusion for this question and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion through the mains answer writing approach we saw the challenges that hinders the effective functioning of supreme court of india and then we saw the steps that can be taken to improve the efficiency of supreme court see this question can be asked in upsc mains so revise all the points that we discussed now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article this article is taken from the science page this article talks about the observation made by the james webb space telescope recently the james webb space telescope observed some 23 teenage galaxies these teenage galaxies were formed roughly 13.8 billion years ago since these galaxies are in their teenage years they showed some unique features firstly these teenage galaxies have a sufficient number of stars and they are rapidly growing secondly the star forming regions of the galaxies were very hot with roughly 13350 degrees celsius of temperature okay so these are the unique features of the teenage galaxies observed by the james webb space telescope this is all about this news article in this context let us see some important points about the james webb space telescope The James Webb Space Telescope, which is in short called as JWST, was designed to be the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope. The JWST is a joint project led by the NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. Okay. Now let us see the unique features of the JWST. The JWST is a large infrared optimized telescope. Here note that the Hubble Space Telescope is a small visible light and ultraviolet light optimized telescope. Now you may have a question. Why the JWST observe the infrared light? See when the very first stars and galaxies formed, they emitted ultraviolet light and visible light. but these ultraviolet and visible lights have been stretched by the universe continual expansion as the universe expands space stretches now when light travels far in this stretched space the wavelength of the light elongates as the wavelength of visible light and ultraviolet light elongates it turns redder and becomes infrared light this phenomenon is called the doppler effect so to observe the earliest history of the universe we need to observe the infrared light this infrared light will be captured by the james webb space telescope this will help in exploring the origins of the universe and our place in it okay so this is the first important feature of the james webb space telescope 
The next important feature of the JWST is its location. The JWST is positioned at the second Lagrange point that is at the L2 point. This L2 point is situated about 1.5 million kilometers that is roughly 9,30,000 miles away from Earth. See this location provides a stable environment for the observations being made by JWST. Here note that the Hubble Space Telescope orbits the Earth and it is not placed at any specific position. Okay, so this is the second important feature. And the final important feature is the JWST has a 6.5 meter primary mirror. This is significantly larger than the Hubble Space Telescope. So using the JWST, we can observe the fainter stars. Okay, so these are all some of the important features of the James Webb Space Telescope. Moving forward, let us see the objectives of the JWST. The James Webb Space Telescope has three main objectives. Firstly, the JWST aims to shed light on our universe's cosmic origins. Secondly, it aims to observe the universe's first galaxies, then to reveal the birth of the stars and planets. And finally, the JWST aims to look for exoplanets with the potential for life. Okay, so these are the main objectives of the James Webb Space Telescope. Now finally let us look at some of the contributions made by the James Webb Space Telescope. Since becoming operational in July 2022, the JWST has delivered a steady stream of beautiful cosmic pictures. These images help scientists to look back through time at our early universe. Then it also helps to examine planets orbiting other stars. And the images also help to monitor worlds in our own solar system. Okay see some of the sample pictures captured using JWST are displayed here for your reference. You can go through it. In addition to this, the JWST has helped observe some of the most distant galaxies in the universe. These galaxies are not only the most distant galaxies to be observed but they are the oldest to be observed. Okay. And finally, JWST helped capture the atmosphere of Titan. Note that Titan is one of Saturn's moons. Titan has rock made of water ice. It also has rivers, lakes and seas made of liquid methane and ethane. Titan is the only moon in our solar system to have a thicker atmosphere. The atmosphere of Titan was clearly captured using the JWST. Okay, so these are all some of the recent contributions made by the JWST to astronomy. Okay, and that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the unique features of James Webb Space Telescope. Then we saw about the objectives of the telescope. And finally, we saw some points regarding the contributions made by James Webb Space Telescope. Now, with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article says that Two pelicans with unusual brownish feathers were recently sighted in Pallikarne marshland in Chennai. These brownish pelicans are distinct from spot-billed pelicans which are usually present there in Pallikarne. It is important to note that brown pelicans are a different species found in the southern US coast and they are non-migratory. While spot-billed pelicans are found in South Asian region and they are migratory birds. This is the crux of the news article given here. Now in this context, let us understand the basics about spot-billed pelicans. The spot-billed pelican is a large migratory bird belonging to the pelican family. It is one of the eight living species of pelicans. It is also known as the grey pelican. The spot-billed pelican has a predominantly white plumage with black flight feathers. The most prominent feature is its greyish brown back and it has spots on its bill. And that's why it is called spot billed pelican. Now talking about the habitat, the spot billed pelicans inhabit wetland areas including marshes, large lakes and lagoons. They are often found in areas with abundant fish which is their primary food source. They mainly inhabit shallow lowland freshwaters. Now coming to the distribution of spot billed pelicans, the spot billed pelicans is primarily found in parts of South Asia including India, Sri Lanka and South Asian countries like Cambodia, Vietnam and Thailand. In India, these species are mainly found in Ramsar wetlands, particularly in the wetlands of Tamil Nadu. Note that Tamil Nadu has 14 Ramsar wetland sites and spot billed pelicans can be found in all these sites. Now coming to the conservation status, the spot billed pelican is classified as near threatened on the IUCN red list of threatened species. Okay. Now what are the threats faced by spot billed pelicans? These species face various threats due to habitat loss, degradation of wetlands and 
disturbance at breeding sites these pelicans breed colonially in trees by building large stick nest these breeding colonies are highly sensitive to disturbance which can affect their nesting success as fish eating bird spot billed pelicans play a vital role in maintaining the balance of fish populations in their habitats okay and that's all regarding this this discussion we saw various facts about spot billed pelicans now with these points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article this news article is about a paper published in the lancet magazine the title of the paper is retinopathy of prematurity in india what can we learn from the polio legacy this article emphasizes how the lessons learned from successfully eradicating polio can be applied to enhance the quality of retinopathy of prematurity services in india okay this is about the news article given here in this context let us see some points about retinopathy of prematurity and we shall also see some points about the global polio eradication initiative now let us start with retinopathy of prematurity retinopathy of prematurity which is in short called as rop is an eye disease that happens in babies who are premature that is the babies who born early it mainly affects the babies who weigh less than 3 pounds at the time of birth see normally the blood vessels of the retina start to develop in the 4th month of pregnancy and finish developing around the due date or 9 months of pregnancy but if a baby is born very early these blood vessels may stop developing normally the retina then develops new blood vessels that are abnormal these abnormal retinas can leak or bleed this causes scarring and retinal detachment in the babies this in turn can result in vision loss or blindness if left untreated so this is how retinopathy of prematurity occurs now what are the symptoms of retinopathy of prematurity see when a baby has retinopathy of prematurity it expresses the following symptoms firstly the baby's eyes wander shake or make other unusual movements secondly the baby's eyes don't follow objects thirdly the pupils of babies looks white and finally the babies have trouble in recognizing faces so these are all some of the symptoms of retinopathy of prematurity now finally let us look at the available treatment options see many babies with retinopathy of prematurity have mild cases and get better without any treatment but some babies need treatment to keep retinopathy of prematurity from getting worse firstly there is laser treatment babies with advanced retinopathy of prematurity may need laser treatment on the sides of retina this treatment can help to keep retinopathy of prematurity from getting worse and help to protect child's vision secondly there is the anti vascular endothelial growth factor drugs doctors inject these drugs into the baby's eye these medicines work by blocking the growth of abnormal blood vessels okay and in advanced cases surgery can be performed to prevent blindness okay so these are all some of the treatment options available to treat retinopathy of prematurity okay this is all about retinopathy of prematurity now let us see some points regarding the global polio eradication initiative see 1998 the world health assembly passed a resolution to eradicate polio this led to the establishment of global polio eradication initiative that is gpei the gpei has a number of stakeholders that include the world health organization rotary international the center for disease control and prevention and the unicef now what are the strategies adopted by gpei the gpei operates in regions where polio remains endemic and where outbreaks occur the initiative employs various strategies like mass vaccination surveillance and community engagement to eradicate polio the initiative also tries to ensure that in areas endemic to polio every child receives the oral polio vaccine or inactivated polio vaccine okay so these are the strategies adopted by gpei now finally let us see the contributions made by gpei Since the launch of GPA polio cases have decreased by more than 99%. In addition to this, polio vaccines have prevented an estimated 20 million cases of paralysis in children since 1988. Apart from this, the polio vaccines have stopped the spread of wild polio virus in all but significantly in two countries such as Afghanistan and Pakistan. And finally GP has aimed to eradicate all forms of polio by the year 2023. Presently it is actively addressing the obstacles standing in the way of achieving this ambitious goal. Okay so these are all some of the important points about global polio eradication initiative and that's all regarding this discussion. This discussion is about 
the condition of retinopathy of prematurity in babies then we saw about the global polio eradication initiative see both these topics are very important for the prelims exam so revise all the points that we discussed now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the video that is to discuss preliminary practice questions as friends today we are having four questions i will solve three of them and one will be a quiz question for you look at the first question here four statements are given we have to find the four statements pertains to which of the given four sikh gurus look at the first statement he was the guru who organized the sikh community into a warrior class called as kalsa now come to the second statement the concept of five k's kesh kanga kirpan kanchara and kara was introduced by him now come to the third statement he abolished all existing social divisions within the sikh community now come to the fourth statement two of his sons are executed on the orders of aurangzeb the above mentioned statements refer to which sikh guru option a guru gobind singh option b guru har gobind option c guru arjan option d guru tej bahadur see these statements refer to the 10th guru of sikhism who is none other than guru gobind singh see guru gobind singh is the last sikh guru in human form so the correct answer is option a guru gobind singh moving on let's take up the second question this question is regarding hubble space telescope look at the first statement hubble captures images in the visible ultraviolet wavelength this statement is correct as we saw in the discussion hubble captures images in the visible and ultraviolet light whereas the james webb telescope captures images in the infrared wavelength so first statement is correct now coming to the second statement hubble orbits the earth approximately 550 km above earth surface this statement is correct now coming to the third statement hubble telescope was recently decommissioned in 2022 see this statement is incorrect hubble telescope even after 33 years of service is still active and not decommissioned so third statement is incorrect here only two statements are correct so the correct answer for the question is option b only two going on let's take up the final question this question is regarding polio myelitis here four statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct look at the first statement it is a highly infectious bacterial disease this statement is incorrect polio myelitis is a highly infectious viral disease okay now coming to the second statement the disease mainly affects the nervous system and causes irreversible paralysis in infected individuals this statement is correct now coming to the third statement there is no known cure for polio but it can be prevented through vaccination this statement is correct actually there is no treatment for polio but the polio can be prevented through vaccination okay now coming to the fourth statement india received polio free certification by the world health organization in 2014 after 3 years of zero cases this statement is also correct in 2014 india received polio free certification by the world health organization here only three statements are correct so the correct answer for the question is option c only three this is a quiz question for you today i will post this quiz question in the community section try to answer it and displayed here is the mains question for your practice go through the question write your answer and post it in the comment section with this we have come to the end of the video if you found our video to be useful do like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe shankar ai's academy youtube channel thank you for listening